Let's find the polar representation for the complex number z equals 1 plus i. Okay, so remember a complex number is a number that is written, written in the form a, where a is a real number, plus b i, where b is a real number, okay, and it has i attached to it. Okay, that's what makes it a complex number. Okay, so in this case, I should identify a and b. a is 1. In b, the number attached to i is an understood 1 out in the front, so it's also 1. Okay, so to find the polar representation, <clears throat> I want to write z in the form the magnitude of z, which is the same as saying the radius, okay, if you're talking about um, polar coordinates, times cosine of an angle plus i times sine of that same angle. And instead of writing this every time, we're going to abbreviate that as CIS. Okay, that's just going to be our abbreviation. Okay, just a shorthand. Okay, but what it means is cosine theta plus I sine theta. Okay, so that's the setup. Now let's actually go and try to fill in what we need. These formulas are very similar to polar coordinate formulas. Okay, if you think about A as the X and B as the Y, Okay, it works out the same way. Okay, so A, which works out like X, is equal to R. Remember, we're treating the magnitude or the absolute value of the complex number as the radius, cosine of theta. And B is equal to the magnitude times sine of theta. Okay, again, this is like saying X equals R cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Okay, same exact thing. All right, and then I bet you can guess what the magnitude formula would be. The square root of a squared plus b squared, right? It's the same thing as r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, that's what I need to figure this problem out. Okay, so let's start off by finding the magnitude of z. I'm going to go ahead and get this out the way just to clear up some space. Okay, so the magnitude of z equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's 1 squared plus 1 squared. That's going to come out to be the square root of 2. Okay, so the magnitude of z is the square root of 2. Okay, now let's use that to find angle theta. Now, remember, um, in the polar coordinates, okay, you had to note what quadrant the point was in. We're going to work this out the same way. If this is an x and this is a y, they're both positive, which would lead me to the first quadrant. That rule still holds. Everything is fine. So quadrant one. All right, so any angle I find needs to be in quadrant one. Let's pick one of these formulas to use. I'll just use A. A is equal to the magnitude of Z times cosine of theta. Let's plug in what I know. A is one. I just found that the magnitude of z is the square root of 2. This times cosine theta. I get cosine theta by itself by dividing both sides by the square root of 2. Okay, so now, um, 1 over the square root of 2. That's not something that's on the unit circle like that. We'll multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. Or you may remember by now that 1 over the square root of 2 is actually just the square root of 2 over 2, which is much more familiar on the unit circle. Okay, so now again, we said we're restricting ourselves to quadrant 1. So if we need cosine to be the square root of 2 over 2 in quadrant 1, then theta has to be pi over 4. Okay, so there we go. We have our magnitude, we have theta, now we're ready to write out the answer. Okay, write out the, um, the number in 
trig notation. So z, the complex number, 1 plus i, is equal to the magnitude, which is the square root of 2, times cosine of the angle, pi over 4, plus i times sine pi over 4. Okay, and if we want to abbreviate that, we absolutely could. As the square root of 2, CIS, pi over 4.